Okay, it's recording. Fantastic, perfect. This is gonna be a short video uh, about my use case on Linux, specifically with Pipewire. Pipewire is an audio subsystem. There's a few out there for Linux. Pulse Audio for years was a popular one. Before that, it was Jack. Now the new one is Pipewire, which personally I think is a lot less confusing to figure out. Uh, at a later date, I'll probably make a video about Linux Mint, a uh, bit of a quick five minute, 10 minute new, new user walkthrough, just how to install stuff, a different topic. Pipewire. This is what's known as a patch bay, what we're looking at right now. This is a graphical representation of all of your nodes in Pipewire and what's connected to where, which outputs left, right, center, et cetera, are connected to where. Uh, all of your audio stuff is going to be in blue. All the blue nodes, this is your audio stuff. Your audio interface, your external sound cards, your internal sound cards, your do the audio portion of your capture card, anything audio, it's going to be in blue. Red is anything to do with MIDI and MIDI devices. I cannot explain anything about MIDI. I don't know the first thing about MIDI. I I have never messed with MIDI, but all the MIDI stuff is in red. And you do have a free wheel and dummy driver. That's always here. That's like, that's there in case something on your system isn't going to work. Like your audio setup is you've borked it somehow. You can still boot into your system. You just won't have any audio. Now, Pipewire can also do video. And as we see down here, all of our video stuff is going to be in yellow. My camera, my webcam here. These two portal outputs for Wayland for Kwin are being captured by OBS. That's why you're able to see my patch bay currently. Now, the brief overview out the way that took two minutes. Here, this is my audio interface. It is a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. As we can see, it is a fourth gen. When you change your audio configs, you can change it from the general sound settings on your system on Linux for the most part. Just about any distro, you, you can do that there. When you select the configuration for the specific devices, you can pick between different profiles. So digital duplex is a digital, digital audio signal. Um, and that's both input and output. Analog duplex, the same way. Some of them, they let you mix and match. So you could do a digital input and an analog output or a digital output and analog input, or you could just do digital output only. You, you get the idea, okay? Uh, but with Pipewire, you could select pro audio for I th think pretty much every single device out there, okay? You're able to just select Pro Audio. And that is what I have done here. As you can see, if I selected the digital out or digital duplex, this would not say playback aux zero or playback aux one. It would say something like playback stereo left, playback stereo right, playback left, playback right, stereo left or stereo right. It would not say playback aux. What Pro Audio does is it exposes every single individual node on your device. And then you're able to sit there and do a lot of fun stuff with that. So as an example, here, this is the source portion of my audio interface. It is your input, your mics, for example. All right, to, to give you a quick rundown, a sync, is your output speakers okay your headphones anything like that uh or even a capture card uh sorry not a capture card um and maybe there is a capture card that I, I think that might i i don't really play with capture cards i don't know but a sync is any kind of output a source is any kind of input you know, your microphone, if you've got a guitar plugged in to an audio interface, that kind of thing. To put it simply, look at it like this. Picture a sink in your bathroom or a sink in your kitchen. The water faucet 
where the water's coming out, as you see the water coming out, the water faucet, that's your source. The water is the audio stream, the sink, the basin. That's where the stream's going. That's like your speakers. Just if you ever get confused by those two terms, think of it like a bathroom sink. But for the purpose of keeping things simple, I will just be using input and output because source and sink, it's whatever. It means the same thing. It's just a more technical term. As far as configuration of files is concerned, that's, that's, that's why you would need to know that. Anyway, since my device is set up in a pro audio profile, we can see here, I have capture aux one, zero, sorry, zero, one, two, and three. Everything starts at zero with Linux, with uh, when it starts with like numbers with this kind of thing, for the most part, or at least the audio wise. So as we see, aux zero and aux one, these are piped to two separate virtual mics I have created because I have two mics and two XLR ports a left noise canceling mic and a right noise canceling mic. I wanted to make two mics for system wide noise cancellation. I use them for different things. You know, my right mic could be for uh, voice calls, video calls, the left could be for streaming and I could mix and match them around as I need to for different things. So these are piped here. These were configs I've written. I will show those in a little bit, but I just wanted to show this graph here. And you can see these two mics up here. In the case of the left, that's what I always have used for like OBS with streaming. That is being captured by OBS. It is a mono source. I had no need of a stereo source for the microphone that just takes more system resources and it really wasn't needed. But we see that's here in OBS and we have my other mic, the right noise canceling mic. And those are piped to these two nodes. The other two would be for uh, a one fourth TRS jack input. So that would be if I was going to plug in a guitar, but I'm not. The other two things you see here, a virtual game and virtual TTS. That, that means text to speech. These are virtual syncs or virtual outputs, virtual sound cards, whatever you want to call them. It all, you'll get the idea. I made these because I wanted to separate things around. So all of my games, all of their audio would play here in the virtual game audio, anything text to speech, maybe like my voice activated macro. So when I'm playing like Elite Dangerous or X4, I can pretend my ship has AI and I tell it to do stuff and it does it. Okay. I'd be like, Hey, uh, put full in, put full power to engines and it will just do it. All right, now get some audio feedback. Good. Different thing. Uh, those are added as dedicated sources in OBS. That is why you see them here. Those two will always show up as a loopback device with random numbers. In this case, 2978-31 and then dash 32. These are going into my audio interface. As far as I am concerned, as a user, this is set up once and done. This has no bearing. It's for me, it's as if these two virtual sound cards or syncs, it's as if they didn't exist. Okay. I, there's no issue. There was no latency difference or anything to, for it as it's, 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 as, it's like they didn't exist. The reason I did this is because adding these two into OBS, that means I can have dedicated sound without having to capture the entirety of any kind of audio or music or whatever that I also happen to be listening to on my end. This won't get captured in OBS. In addition with that, I have VK capture, which is like Windows game capture, but the difference is game capture like hooks into the game and takes the frame VK capture. It just sends the frame out and OBS just collects what's sent out and automatically done. It just immediately captures any game I fire up. I just set the launch command in steam or heroic launcher. This way I don't have to record 
a my whole desktop or like add individual windows. It's just automatically done, ready to go. Uh, because I, you know, you've seen streamers where they capture the whole desktop and all this other stuff. And just, this is just easier because it's automatically set up and done. You don't have to touch it again, but that's why I've set that up. And the two K wins down here, that's for when you uh, uh, allow a portal on Pipewire because OBS on Wayland does portal screen capture. So you have to give it permission to either capture a monitor or capture a specific program. They show up down here as K win Wayland and piped into OBS. Now for the other part of this video, I want to show the config file. As we see here, this is one for the virtual microphone. Now, this is a project you can get on GitHub. I will actually put a link for this because uh, I it, it would be wrong of me not to, honestly, if I'm gonna show you this, I'm, it would be wrong of me not to give you a link to where you can get this. Here, we can see the audio position, aux one. If we look at here, aux one, correlates to capture aux one. Simple. This is the simple config file. You only need to set this up once. Once you've set it up, you don't really need to touch it. In my case, I just made a copy of this for uh, the second one for the left. And uh, I just changed the name of a couple of things and duplicated some files. Bing, bang, boom, I was done. As you can see here, uh, I had a left one, but I have a right one. And you just change the name here, XLR left, noise canceling mic, XLR right, noise canceling mic. Uh, same thing here, look at the plugin folder, or sorry, the plugin location. This corresponds to a .so file that's needed in order for this to work. So you need to point this in the right place that this file is located at. Uh, in this case here, it's in my home, it's in my .local folder, my share folder, my LADSPA folder, and the file is called librnnoise underscore LADSPA underscore capital XLR underscore capital R IGHT dot SO. And it's the same thing here for the other plugin for the gate. Same thing, same location. I just duplicated the files and assigned them the name XLR left or XLR right. I've just appended those at the end of the duplicates and the original. So XLR left, XLR right, simple. One thing to keep in note, username. Every user on a Linux system has a username. Now my username is not username. You know, it could be, let's say you're, if you set your name up as uh, Jimmy, it would be home slash Jimmy slash dot local or Tanya, same thing. You replace username with the name of the uh, account you made when you installed Linux. It's like if you made a uh, bought a Windows computer and it asked you to input a name, same thing. You know, you put Tony, boom. Your username's Tony, all lowercase. The virtual TTS or the virtual syncs, for example, they're even simpler. You see here, context modules, shows up as a loopback device, media class, TTS sync, boom. That's the node name, the node description, virtual TTS, and the playback props, virtual TTS, simple. You just change the names as you need them around once you've set this up. These correspond to the different ones I had in my patch bay. One thing I wish to point out, target object, and the node name. So here, the node name, this depends on what it's doing. Capture props, it's gonna say capture.rn noise. Versus here, playback props, it'll say dot output. So you just name it whatever you want. 
it's just you're either putting at dot output at the end if it's an output or you're putting capture at the beginning right i think you can change it around but this works i'm not going to mess with it the thing to keep in mind here is your target object so if you're using pipewire your target object is going to show up as something like also output dot USB dash whatever your device name is. And then it's going to end with dot pro output or something like that. So this insert device name in between those little brackets, all you need to do is find uh, the output, the name of that. And that's easy to do. If you're running Pipewire, you can just put, all right, if it's in pro audio, open up a terminal command line, type in PW dash POP. That will give you a refresh, like a two window program that's refreshing two seconds. That's part of Pipewire's uh, built-in functions. And it'll show you the node name of everything for input and for your output. So this, if the output, let's say it's a, a Behringer device, it would be USB dash, Behringer 62 dash whatever else, maybe a bunch of numbers, who knows? Same thing with your capture props. Instead of saying output, as we see here, it will say input. And you follow the same pattern, get your device name, and you do your pro input. Simple. And you end up with this beautiful, beautiful graph here of everything being automated and it's easy to follow and read and see what's going where. You end up with this nice, clean, organized. You could sit somebody down for five minutes and easily explain this to them. This video is now about 17 minutes. That was all I wanted to show. I'm going to upload this because I don't like beating around the bush. It's just straight to the point, and that's what I wanted to show. Uh, if you like this video, let me know. I greatly would appreciate it. Y'all have a good one.